today's video, I'm going to be taking you through an online blitz game that I played yesterday against a very high rated opponent. Uh, time control is 3 minutes plus 2 seconds increment. And I just thought this was a really interesting game. Um, like a really a really uh, sophisticated like positional squeeze. Um, again, against like someone who's very competent at the game, clearly by their rating. So you go e4, c5. Sicilian. I play this gambit line where I give up pawn on b4 and the idea is to take big control in the center because c3 comes with tempo. Uh, my opponent plays d5 which isn't a great move but so many people play it because it looks like it makes sense right because you want to strike in the center but white can just push and the black knight now struggles to develop and white can get some really nice queen side play, sorry, king side play. So knight c6 is played. I go queen g4, just targeting g7 and forcing the bishop to retreat. Here I go bishop a3 to try and trade the bishops off, which the computer doesn't like, but to me it makes sense because if we do get a trade, my knight can try and get into the d6 square, which is one of the advantages of having the pawn on e5. My opponent plays knight g7, just blocking the diagonal. I go bishop d3, taking control of this diagonal. Knight f5, and I could take it and damage the structure. But I can also kind of do that at any time, because the knight isn't really going anywhere. And the knight also isn't really threatening anything. Like, you know, it's, it's not doing anything. It's just kind of blocking the diagonal. That's his job. So I can cut it down at any time. So I take on f8. King takes f8 to guard the g7 pawn. Because if rook takes, then I take the knight and then g7. And this <coughs> looks very uncomfortable for black. So he takes to the king. And he now can't castle. Knight f3. a6 preparing b5, I castle, my opponent plays bishop, bishop d7, just developing, knight bd2, and even though attack. I've gambited a pawn, there's no need for me to go straight for black's throat immediately, because whilst I'm down a pawn, it should make it fly. black is kind of down a rook, a CRM shouldn't let customers slip through the cracks. like he can't Connect use his rook, right? So it's not really like I'm down much material. Now, if I give black too much time, of course, then he will get his rook out and be up a clean pawn. But I obviously need my pieces to start to activate to prove my advantage, like my positional advantage. So knight c to e7, uh, because the knight isn't really doing anything on b6 because of the way that my pawn structure is. Uh, I go rook fb8, b1, sorry, just to put pressure on the queenside pawns. Bishop c6, defending, which is logical. Um, I go knight b3, because I'm looking at c5 and maybe a5 to target b7. h5 is played, which I was kind of expecting, and because maybe it lets the rook come out this way. But I was also quite happy to see it, because felt like it just weakened black's position and it also meant that knight g5 is an option in future because there's no h6 to kick it out and f6 is just met with taking and also weakens e6 right so my opponent attacks my queen again i just retreat no need to hang around for a queen trade brings his knight back which he's just kind of shuffling his knights you know the past few moves He's just kind of dancing his knights around, and so I just jump in, attacking b7. Rook b8 is played defending. I go knight g5, which threatens knight takes, pawn takes, knight takes, with a fork on the king and queen, um, which my opponent sees, and he plays queen to c8 to defend the pawn. The computer hates this move, and wants king to g8. I might have still sacked, I'm not sure, but I just, I mean, it, it's so, 
it's, it's such a tough position for Black. Like, he can't get his pieces out. His knights are kind of tripping up over each other. His rook's stuck being passive defending. This rook literally can't get out. And the queen also can't really get out. Like, a lot of the squares that she might want to go to are taken up. And she can no longer sit on d8 or go to c7 because of the knight sack. So it's forced to c8. I play queen e3. Uh, with the intention of going to f3. Because... There's still ideas of um, pinning the pawn and using that to my advantage. King g8 is now played. Queen f3. Computer doesn't like it, but it looks logical to me. Just put pressure on my opponent. Bishop to e8, defending f7. Because I'm obviously threatening to take it and mate him in one. Then I go rook b6. I'm just putting more pressure on e6 for a potential sacrifice. And also preparing to double up on the b-file because if i can win this pawn and get a rook to the seventh rank black is done black is done and my opponent plays h4 supposedly with the intention of getting the rook to h5 i would think and here i could play h3 prevent um my opponent playing h3 but if my opponent plays this i'm just going to play g3 or just take with a knight even. Like, I don't care. I just kind of ignore him and continue my plan. There's rook h6. It's just... It kind of ignores my point. Because knight takes a6. And he can't take back. Because I've got now two attackers on the rook. And he has one defender. So he has to move the rook. I move the knight back. And my opponent does have knight takes e5. Uh, attacking my queen and my bishop. And undermining the fact that my pawn is overloaded. Guarding the pawn on e5 that he just took. And the knight on c5. So I take take. And take on b7. And the material is now equal. So my gambit all those moves ago. Um, where I gambited a pawn. You know. I'm back on level material. But look at his pieces. And then compare them to my pieces. Like. My pieces are absolutely dominating uh, and uh, they work together so nicely like for example black can't even take c3 because i win the queen with a discovered attack um the e5 pawn is weak but there is no real way for black to actually exploit it and black's pieces just aren't really functioning properly right so he plays knight c6 attacking the pawn and I play knight takes f7 because I simply have more attackers on the pawn than he has defenders 2 versus when my knight was there 3 so rook h7 is played which my opponent probably could have you know tried to hang on a bit better the computer actually wants a rook to h8 or rook to g6. In either way, giving up the pawn. He can't take, because this is mate. So, and if his rook remains there, say he just plays a nothing move, then I'm going to take that, and then deliver mate like this. So the position is lost. My opponent does try rook h7. I just take it and then check and then mate uh, well my opponent actually resigned after queen h5 check but this sequence is forced so yeah it's a very nice victory against quite a high rated player um, and I'm kind of comfortably sitting around like just over 2000 elo on chess.com blitz which I'm quite happy with considering my classical Official rating is 1950 at the moment, which I'd like to push up to 2000. I think I'm better in classical chess anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the game. Uh, I thought it was just very interesting, like the positional bind that I have on black with these three pawns counteracting these two in the center. But black just has no mobility. And his extra pawn on the queen side just isn't felt because they can't they can't really advance, especially when I bring my other rook over. 
and start to pile up with my knight, uh, getting into C. That's not how my knights move. Getting into C5. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you found that interesting, educational, um, or I mean, if you just watched to the end, then you probably enjoyed it. Then please drop a like and subscribe. Uh, I'll be uploading daily videos, so stay tuned. And yeah, have a good one, guys.